Hello, um, you are welcome to this lecture. So here we want to um, continue with our study of complex numbers. We want to look at polynomial equations with real coefficients. Okay. So we start with the theorem. Uh, I'll explain what that is, and then we'll do some examples to, um, to understand it. It says that if a polynomial equation with real coefficients, coefficients has complex roots, they occur, they occur in conjugate terms. All right. Now we'll, we'll prove it shortly. But what this means is that um, if I have uh, a polynomial z squared let's say plus 4 is equal to 0 um, then of course z squared is equal to negative 4 so that z will be equal to uh, plus or minus uh, 2i right which means that um, z is equal to 2i and z is equal to negative 2i are uh, roots of this complex, complex um, polynomial all right now this is that if z is equal to plus 2i is a root of this equation, then I am guaranteed that v is equal to negative 2i is also a root. Okay? And for that matter, if I have z is equal to uh, 2 plus 3i as the root of some polynomial, okay, then this theorem says that Obviously, z is equal to 2 minus 3i must be the root of that polynomial as well. Okay? So it helps you um, to find the root of polynomial equations with, um, with real with real equations. Okay? So how do we how do we prove that? Okay, so let's let's uh, let's prove it uh, from from here. So so we can let we are going to let um, some polynomial p of x be a polynomial, okay? Let it be a polynomial with real coefficients, real coefficients, okay? Such that, okay, to like such that we can let x to be equal to let's say a plus b r some complex number where a and b of course are real. So this is our polynomial. X here is uh, some complex we with complex numbers. Now if this x or uh, this is a root of this polynomial then of course if I sub in this into this then it should go to zero. Right? Because it's a root. So if this is um, a root, then of course I know that p of a plus bi has to be equal to zero because it is the root of, um, of that polynomial. Okay? Good. Now we'll apply this uh, very soon. Okay? But note that if p okay, of a plus, suppose that this is equal to some complex number. Okay? Okay, this is a polynomial p. I can plug in uh, any number, complex number into it, and I get a complex number. Let's call it c plus d i. Okay? This theorem says that if this is a root, okay, then p a minus d i must be a root as well. If it is a root, then I need to prove that this is also equal to zero. If this is zero, this has to be zero as, as well. So how do we prove this? So that is that is a question. That is basically a proof. All right. This is for sure from assumption, right, or from theorem. Um, how do you show that this is it? And we are saying that suppose that my polynomial is such that p a plus b i is equal to some c plus d i, some other complex number. Now, how do we know about you know, polynomials of complex numbers. So take examples, for instance, take if you have a plus b i squared, so this is say x squared, will be this squared. All right, I'm just doing some examples so that you, you, you understand what is going to follow next. Uh, if I square this, I'm going to have this squared, I'm going to have two times a, b, and i, 
I'm going to have bi squared, right? Bi is going to square. To be squared, and that is a squared plus 2abi. This becomes negative b squared. Do you see that? This I can rewrite as a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. So I have the real part, I have that imaginary part. Alright? Good. So if I square a complex number, I get something that looks that will look like that. But if I cube it, if I cube a complex number, x cube, I'm going to have a plus b i raised to the power 3. You can use binomial expansions. If you expand this, you're going to have a to the power 3. Okay? You're going to have plus 3. I'm going to have a squared multiplied by b i, right? I'm going to have 3. A, I'm going to have bi squared, right? And I'm going to have this guy raised to the power 3. bi raised to the power 3. Okay? If you cube that, I mean, if you expand this, you're going to have a raised to the power 3. Uh, of course, this is going to be complex. Let me just rewrite right, everything out. 3a squared, bi. This will give me minus 3ab squared. Right? I squared is negative 1. I cubed is minus i. So this is minus b raised to the power 3 i. Okay? Now note that I can group this as well into real and uh, imaginary parts. So if I group that, I'm going to have a to the power 3. I'm going to have minus 3 a b squared plus. I'm having 3 a squared b. I'm going to have minus b to the power 3 i. Okay? You know that a polynomial with complex or complex numbers, s cube, you have something like that. If I cube it, a polynomial will be a combination of you know, x squared plus you know, x cubed plus x to the power 4 and so on. But this gives us an idea. Okay? That if I have a polynomial, and I write it like this, okay? It's some C plus D I, a real part, and then a imaginary part. What you notice is that, at least from here, you will see that the real part of it, okay, contains even powers of D. The Ds are squared here, the D is also squared here. Whereas the D part contains all powers of D, right? So for instance, this is b to the power 1, which is odd. I'm going to have here, this side has b to the 1, b to the 3, so the powers for b here are odd as well. Why is that important? Okay? What that means is that if p, a polynomial, a plus b, I is called this. If I negate this, if I change the sign of b, the sign of d, the sign of c is not going to change. Because C, which is the real part, only contains even powers of B. Okay? Even powers of B. Therefore, a change in sign of B does not affect the sign of C here. Alright? It only affects the sign of D. Because the D part, that is the imaginary part, contains all powers of B. That is, that is basically the, uh, the trick to, uh, to the proof. Okay? So I'm going to come here and say that for complex numbers C, right, from here from here C, so we note that C contains only even powers powers of B and D contains only all powers of B. Okay? Which means that if I change the sign of B, P A minus B I, this is going to be equal to C. The sign of C will not change just because of this, but the sign of D will change. D will become minus D. Okay, so I have 
I have this equation, okay? Then I have this equation. The sign here is important based on this analysis. The sign of D will change, but C will not change, okay? Good. Now, we said that if A plus B I is a root of the polynomial, then of course P A P into A plus B I must go to zero, right? This has to go to zero. If this is equal to this, then it implies that C plus B I must be zero. If the complex number is zero, the real part must be zero and the imaginary part must be zero as well. So this implies that C must go to zero and B must also be zero. Which also implies that if C is zero and B e is zero, it implies P of A minus B I must be equal to zero. Right? Because C is zero and B is zero. Now, this is equal to zero. Call this one. This is also equal to zero. If this is zero, it implies this is a root. A minus B I, P of this is equal to zero, also means that A minus B I is also a root of the polynomial. Okay? So that if this is a, a root, the conjugate of it is also a root. So that is why the theorem says that if you get a root, the root must occur in conjugate pairs. Alright? So this implies, therefore, A minus B I is also a root of the polynomial P X. And that is the proof, basically. That is the proof of um, that is the proof of the theorem. Okay? So um, let's use it to um, let's use this theorem to do um, a simple example to illustrate to illustrate it. Okay? 